There are many, many, many ways to write CSS, from spaghetti, you know, thrown into a file, to structured BEM all over your project, to CSS and JS and even more. In this video, we're gonna port some components from a site that uses Tailwind into our Rust and Wasm Leptos site and run into a few problems along the way. This is the site we'll be replicating, Rust Adventure. I use Tailwind on the current Rust Adventure site and since I'm not looking to do a redesign and a re-architecture, we're gonna stick with that if we can. There are a ton of ways to write CSS out there, so use something that works for your project. And while it would be easy to succumb to the rewrite everything in Rust approach, we're going to actually get fewer headaches in the long term using the primary source tool for Tailwind, even though in the longer term, we may see Tailwind rewrite in Rust as well. Since I'm using just files as the source of my tasks, I wrote a just file to run Tailwind. We can put the dependency for Tailwind inside of a package JSON or use NPX and then throw the Tailwind config in tailwind.config.js. This takes our input.css file, scans all of our files for all the class names we're using, and outputs a CSS file in the styles directory. And I already really want a shortcut in my editor for building out new components. The scaffolding isn't quite a lot, but remembering which scope to type into the arguments that it always has to return the same thing, that I wanna probably set up an RSX macro somewhere in there, it's just a lot to type over and over and over when you're doing a lot of porting work. This is definitely a reminder to me that uh, I'm kind of tired of just writing buttons over and over and over, and I feel like we should have higher level tools in the UI ecosystem. We really don't in general, so that'll be a topic for another video, I guess. We also immediately run into a challenge porting the navigation component. It uses JavaScript, third-party JavaScript, for popovers and transitions. So the question comes up, do we port that code or do we try to integrate it? Now, the old Rust Adventure site is written in Preact, so it's pretty unrealistic to expect that the Preact-specific framework code would, you know, just run with our new Leptos site. That's kind of like expecting React to work with Vue. So let's take a look at what the functionality actually is. The functionality itself comes from a project in the Tailwind organization called Headless UI. It's MIT licensed, so if we want to port the code, we're free to do that. And, oh look, there's an SWCRC in the root. It turns out you don't actually have to rewrite everything in Rust to take advantage of of Rust tooling for your project. The headless UI package doesn't have any dependencies, which is really good for us if we want to decide to port, because it means that we won't have to delve through a bunch of NPM packages to find out what functionality is used where and how much code it is. But the popover context provider is a thousand lines just by itself, and it pulls in a bunch of dependencies from internal to the project. So now the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Do we port the code, use an alternative implementation, or just change the navigation entirely to maybe not rely on JavaScript or Wasm to function? And I think that's what it comes down to for a lot of this real world code. This is what it's going to come down to if you try to use Wasm in your project. It's going to be, okay, so I'm used to having this popover. I'm used to having that component library. I'm used to having this functionality that's already built out in the ecosystem. And rewriting that code and maintaining accessibility and focus states across these components is actually generally kind of a hard problem. Different frameworks handle these details differently, of course. So if you're converting from Preact or React compared to porting from Vue or Solid, these will have different impacts on your ability to, you know, port that code. But this definitely won't be the last time that we run into this issue. For the moment, I've chosen to comment out the popover usages in the navigation, which will disable the mobile navigation, but will allow us to move forward with the rest of the site. Personally, I always feel more motivated to do mundane work like porting when it's at the end of a project and the last thing I need to do to ship. So that's just how I'm choosing to stack it up. So instead of porting anything, I decided to go as far as I could, building out the rest of the pages, building out the functionality that I needed, while keeping an all important list of everything that I needed to implement later. Now there is one place that I'm going to do a little bit of a redesign, but it's not gonna be an actual well-researched, well-thought-through design, because the workshops page that I chose in the last redesign actually didn't really work out and was a little bit more confusing than it needed to be. So instead of replicate that page, I dropped the data that I had into a list-based approach that looked a little bit more like something that you would see on YouTube. This is just an easy ship so that I can come back to it later and incrementally build it up into a better page with better navigation. Big to-do list items on the workshop page include actually routing to any of the workshop pages when you click on one of the workshops, logged in statuses because some people will be able to access some and some will not, and the image hosting and delivery for the workshop thumbnails. The homepage is also something worth covering. The big to-do list items on the homepage are a syntax highlighting component, 
integration with ConvertKit so that people can sign up for the free email course introduction to Rust Adventure, and additional functionality around like fetching blog posts and actually rendering a couple of them on the homepage. There are also some other major features that we still need to implement, such as video playback, which is fairly critical to the site working. But updating the images was fairly easy, so I chose to take that direction. The old Rust Adventure site is hosted on Netlify, which has great support for shipping static assets of all different kinds. This includes images, but with the new fly.io deployment and the new site, I want to be able to upload these images and change them in the database on the fly rather than having them be static assets on the site. So I chose to move to Cloudinary for image hosting. This is a kind of a drop-in solution here. If Cloudinary ends up not working out, I can always choose something else and I can always go all the way back to manually optimizing my images and throwing them on S3 and throwing a CDN in front of them or something like that. For now, Cloudinary is extremely straightforward and I don't have to set up extra S3 buckets or anything like that. So I upload the photos, I copy the URLs, I throw the URLs in the database and then we use them on the front end. I added a new thumbnail field in the database for each workshop to actually be able to store these URLs. And at this point, I have a little bit of a confession to make. I haven't made a single commit on this entire project. We're at about 1500 lines of code between the API server and the UI server with most of that being weighted towards the UI server because of the kind of like RSX JSX being fairly expansive in terms of the number of lines of code it takes to write a component. So I'm going to go take care of that and I'll see you in the next video. If you've watched this far and you have a preferred styling solution, please leave it in the comments and maybe we'll make another video about that one.